Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, your plant mommy. I'm here to educate you about some very important issues in houseplant and honestly botany taxonomy that has become really problematic. Not become problematic, it's always been problematic. For some reason, people are kind of only just now starting to talk about it. Today, I'm gonna talk to you guys about racism in plant taxonomy and botany and how it has pervaded through like forever, but kind of only just now people are realizing that like, hey, this kind of isn't cool. So if you don't have the emotional capacity today for this video, I urge you to not watch. I am not going to be saying any of the names that are not okay to say. Instead, I'm actually going to be putting them on the screen for educational purposes. I think it's really important for people to know exactly what I'm talking about. So you're gonna see some really awful names on the screen depending on where you're watching from you might not know what they are or they might have like been something that's awful and in the houseplant community you might still hear people say these names i'm going to explain the historical significance of these problematic names as well as tell you better ways to talk about these plants that don't deserve to have these horrific tags on them. If you like this kind of houseplant history, plant tea videos, please make sure you subscribe. I try to make these as often as possible without causing you guys too much emotional stress. <laughs> With that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. Something that's really interesting about plants is that normally when you think of like inappropriate plant names, you'll think of something maybe that's like sexual in nature or perhaps something that's just like kind of funny to say. A couple of examples of some kind of like funny taxonomy is the common name uh, nipplewort. <laughs> this is for the plant Lapsana communis or cockhold <laughs> or also known as Biden's canada or virgin thistle which is Circeum virginets. These are like oh they're inappropriate haha <laughs> like funny names. Then we also have some fun names, right? Like something you guys might know about is the Begonia Darth Vidariana or the Begonia Amidala. Those are both names from Star Wars. People think of like botanists as this like super like high level like glasses, like smart brain. Botanists are just people, but you can literally name a plant anything. Uh, there are certain guidelines in taxonomy that are created by specific societies. Uh, for example, like the International Aeroid Society has specific guidelines for the creation of specific names, you have to like follow a list. And then those names are either accepted or unaccepted or whatever. Back in the day, there weren't really any guidelines. And so people could just name plants literally whatever they want. And the common name of plants is also really different than the botanical name of plants. And that's something that's also important to note is that for some reason, <laughs> like this racism that we're gonna get into really only exists in majority in the common houseplant sect. There are names in taxonomy, like more scientific names, that also do have racist past, but you would never know because they're in Latin. I have a list of one, two, three, four, five, six different names we're gonna get into. And you might be like, how is there racism in botany? Plants are awesome. I can like celebrate plants with people from all over and we all share the love of plants. So like, why would this be in here? And well, that's because botany and taxonomy actually is rooted in colonialism. Like, you know, countries sending out people to go and be imperialistic and take over other countries and claim them as their own. You know, we had that whole thing happen in like the 17 and 1800s where all these different countries from, I mean, all over the world were trying to take over other countries and have a stake there. You know, it was like this massive land war. It was like, oh, other places exist, they're mine and now. These people would go to places where there would be active tribes and active people living there. And these botanists, because botany has been around you guys forever. And I mean, these botanists would come from like the Royal Palace of Britain and they would go Go to these places, learn from the indigenous people who lived there about all these plants and then claim that they discovered it. So even though you might have like, oh, this person is credited with the naming of this plant or the discovery of this plant, most of the time those botanists who were credited learned about it from the indigenous people or the people who were just there first and then they slaughtered them <laughs> and took all the credit for themselves and all these indigenous tribes that taught all these different variety of people who were colonizing, you know, it was primarily white, but there were also colonizers from other countries. They are largely uncredited. It's just really hard because these poor 
tribes are completely and solely uncredited teaching these botanists who came to learn um, and then, uh, what's it called, pillage all these plants. Like one of the most specific examples is the Great Palace of Britain was sending out orchid hunters back in the 1800s. And they were going around the entire world to different British colonies, learning from the indigenous people who lived there. <laughs> pillaging all the orchids that they could find. And there's a story of one orchid hunter who was returning with 40,000 orchids for the Great Palace of Britain. And he was murdered and his orchids were stolen by another orchid hunter who took it back and got all the money from the palace. But I just think that something that's really important to remember, if you're watching this video and you're like, oh, I we can't say anything anymore, or we can't do this, or we can't do that, it's really important to put yourself in the shoes of the people who have been victimized by colonists, these like plant hunters. It's, it's really, really, really important because these people have been victimized for hundreds of years and they are still being victimized in taxonomy they're still having to deal with these things to this day because of the people who named their plants racist caricatures of the people who told them about the plants in the first place it's really sad so just go into this video with that lens <laughs> please don't be someone who's like we can't say anything anymore it's like you could never say this in the first place you didn't have the backstory you didn't know that it was bad and it's okay to not know something but what's not okay and i'm kind of like i'm kind of borrowing this from my friend ken who made a video about this i think two years ago but it's okay to like learn that you didn't know something but it's not okay to pretend that that thing doesn't exist just because it makes you uncomfortable. Like there's a lot about learning that makes you uncomfortable and that's why learning is so great. Now after seeing this video, you will know these things and what you choose to do in the future, like it's up to you. I just think it's really important to have this knowledge that base it off of the lens of these people who have been <sighs> struggling for hundreds of years. It's just really, I'm just really passionate about this. Okay, anyway. The first one we're gonna talk about is Divinbachia. The common name for this plant is right here on the screen. Calcium oxalate crystals exist in the plant Divinbachia. Calcium oxalate, when ingested, makes it really hard for you to speak because your throat closes, it swells your tongue in the inside of your mouth, and it makes you almost unintelligible. Back in the day, in the Caribbean, and I'm sure in other places, Divinbachia were actually used to punish slaves that were being transported through the Caribbean. This affected, I mean, it is, it is impossible to know the amount of people who underwent this horrific, <laughs> this horrific punishment for acting out of line. But I mean, it's, it's uncountable. It is, it is impossible to know, but it was such a common practice in slave keeping to make them eat Diffenbachia, to make the slaves eat Diffenbachia, to forcibly put it in their mouth or to grind it up and make them eat it. It would make them speak dumb, which is an archaic term used to describe someone who is unintelligible. This name arose from that because it was the common name used back then as the name of the plant that was used for punishing disobedient slaves. This name is still used all of the time to this day. There are YouTubers who put this name in their title still today who don't stop using this. This name is absolutely horrific. It is rooted in horrific origins. And something you guys are gonna see is that most of the names on this list either refer to racist stereotypical names or black Americans or black Africans or indigenous people. It blows my mind like how much specifically is catered against racism towards black people. That's Diffenbachia. Calcium oxalate crystals exist in a bunch of other poisonous houseplants, well, toxic houseplants. Usually those crystals are the reason plants are on the ASPCA's not safe for pets list. But yeah, this name is bad. Do not use it anymore. If you have friends that use this name and they, you hear them, you know, say it, rem like tell them, hey, that's actually like a really racist old school name. Please don't use that. Instead, just call it Diffenbachia and then whatever name it has. It's so easy. Diffenbachia is so fun to say. Diffenbachia. This next one is really difficult uh, to discuss. This is going to be for the plant Trandoscantia, who is known as this commercially. There has been a massive push recently for this plant to be called just Trandoscantia or a variety of other different names. Something that 
people also have been kind of referring to it as is wandering dude but which my friends referred to it at for a while when we first found out that this name was problematic we were like oh we'll call it wandering dude but actually that is still problematic because not problematic i feel like that's a bad word to say it is still racist um racist this name originates from a racist caricature of a jewish person that was perpetuated by the nazis during world war ii it was this wandering jewish person who went around and like perpetuated racist propaganda and it was really awful um, to put it shortly, without getting too into it, this plant has been defended by people saying, oh, it's actually like Jesus wandering through the desert. So it's okay because Jesus was Jewish and it's Jesus wandering, but it's, it's no, this, we know for a fact where this plant came from. It was, it came from a racist stereotype of Jewish people. And so to call, keep, continue calling this plant when Jewish people themselves have said that this is racist and you're choosing to not like, you know, it's just not good. If you're looking for something else to call this plant, you could call it Trandescantia. Trandescantia is an amazing fun name. Trandescantia or Trandescantia. There's also like really fun names like Bubblegum Princess or Kitten Ears. Like there's some really, really cute things that you can say, but that is where that comes from. And this has been the most controversial one. I've seen people have an, an issue with changing because it's such a common name. I would say this is probably more common than the first one on this list, the Diffenbachy one we just talked about. Um, to the point where I still see people, we had a whole thing in our local Facebook group for Idaho, where pe like there were some people who were like, please stop saying this, it's racist against me. And there was a bunch of people who just did not want to hear it. And they were like, we can't say anything anymore. And it's just these people who just don't want to have this racist stereotype perpetuated against them anymore, asking you to please stop saying that. This next one we're going to talk about is also really, really, really messed up. I mean, they're all messed up, but right now we're going to be talking about the Hoya croniana. And there used to be a name for this plant that I do still see people use sometimes, and it's this. This name is really messed up and there there was a song I used to listen to in when I was growing up. Um, it came on the radio a lot and it was by some singer and he, he sang the name, like he sang this word, this slur. Um, this is a slur for the record. It's a slur against the, specifically the Inuit and the Yupik people, the indigenous people of Alaska. But this term was used to describe a super splashy, super silver Hoya croniana, which I don't know what people call it now. Hoya croniana, like super silver or super splash or something. Um, I do still see some people use this term, uh, which is always sad. It was most likely a misnomer from the Inuit word for eating it raw. And I'm not going to try to pronounce it because I'm going to botch it. But basically, it sounded like this if you didn't know how to speak their language. The indigenous people, the Inuits and the Yupiks, they were considered to be the old trope of a And so basically, this word was contrived from the word eating it raw as in eating meat raw as in their you know it is a slur it is not like oh that's like it's racist just don't say it it's like this is a slur please 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 don't say this there are songs that have this word in it please don't say it indigenous representation in our country is extremely minimal i think because people just have to push it into the back of their heads that this happened that we did this that we pushed people out of their own country and now we live here they can't do anything about it so they just try to forget about it um because they can't handle it and so people don't really realize that this word is as bad as it is but it's basically like calling a person just the lowest form just a really bad word um so please don't say this word anymore the next one we're going to talk about is also about indigenous peoples we're going to be talking about the cactus lophoceris shoddii it is commonly referred to as this and this term you know totem pole is not inherently you know racist the problem with this is that it's a gross misrepresentation of the historical significance of totem poles or also known as monumental poles that are carved by native tribes. Totem pole has the historical significance of one main deity, one main god that 
the tribe really resonates with. A bunch of passive or aggressive animals underneath that main head. I mean, it is such an important thing for native communities. And so when you look at something like Lophoceros shadii, which is a bumpy, misshapen, very cool looking cactus. When you look at something and you're like, oh, that looks like a totem pole. You're completely devaluing the native culture of the historical significance and cultural significance of a totem pole to native tribes because totem poles are not this lumpy, misshapen, weird growing thing. They are purposefully carved. There is very, very strong significance to each animal that is represented and each spirit represented to the tribe. And so when you look at something that's just like this like bumpy, misshapen mess and you call it the same thing as such a cultural totem poles to native tribes are very, very important. They, they carry a lot of significance. It's just really rude and inappropriate. Indigenous peoples have tried saying, please stop doing this, uh, but this is definitely one of the lesser known inappropriate things to refer to a plant as. Just call it bumpy cactus or funny cactus, or I don't know, there's not really another common name that people are calling Lophocera shadii. A lot of people are still calling it this. It's just really, really, really diminishing towards indigenous peoples uh, who again were the people who educated the botanists who came over from other countries in the first place, who then took credit for discovering these plants that indigenous people have been caring for this entire time. So it's just like spitting in their face and it's just not cool and please don't use it. Um, Thank you very much. This next one um, is not really going to have that much significance to Americans unless you are from Africa. Um, this word I'm gonna put on the screen, I am going to censor at least one letter because this word right here is a horrific slur used in South Africa against black Africans. It's such a bad word that if you use it against someone in South Africa, it is grounds for legal action. It is so bad. If you want to, you can look it up. I'm not going to put the full word on the screen because it is so bad. Um, yeah, and I just don't want to trigger anyone. But um, this is used as a common word for multiple different lilies, as well as the plant cit citrus hystrix. People call it the this plant, or they call the lilies this lily. If you are using this word in America and you don't know the cultural significance of it in Africa, please do not use it. It is so bad. By the way, I am going to have resources on all these things in the description. You're welcome to continue your, your reading. I highly encourage people to do you know their own research about all this stuff. The last thing we're going to talk about, we're going to discuss for just a little bit, and that is going to be croton caudianium, caudianium variegata. It's a very common croton, also commonly referred to as this. This is a stereotype name for a black woman in America. This name was used for black female nannies who cooked and took care of white families during the time of slave labor. This name for this person insinuated that the black woman belonged to the white people. She took care of their kids, even though she had her own kids and oftentimes also a husband. She was she was the property of and a completely desexualized version of a human woman. This name was referring to someone who was extremely unsexual, extremely almost grotesque, but knew how to like cook and clean and could care for kids and you know, all the stuff. But it was meant to perpetuate the idea that black women are not attractive and are not worthy. And it was meant to kind of make, make this thing that white men and black women do not interact. They do not have any kind of sexual interactions, which is not, it, it's so disgustingly not true because black women were often by their slave owners. And it's very, 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 very sad. There are lots of stories of women who were 
allowed to sleep in the house as long as the husband of the family that they had to serve could do whatever he wanted to them. And so these women were often beat, they were often abused, they are survivors if they survived, but this stereotype was meant to create the idea that this doesn't happen um, and that they didn't, they weren't subject to that. And one of the most historically significant examples of this is actually the company Aunt Jemima, who I'm sure lots of us grew up with. Um, I am 23 years old, I turned 24 this year, I was born in 1998, and I remember in fifth and sixth grade when the company changed its name. I remember because we talked about it a little bit in class and we were making jokes about it how like why would they have a racist caricature well the, the character was aunt jemima's logo which was a black woman and has been in american history the longest running cartoonized version of a black woman um who was the exact stereotype of this it's called this stereotype um this word stereotype and normally it's a black woman wearing a bandana, a very large body, she has an apron and usually short hair and her face is usually disfigured with red lips and extremely dark complexion. And this stereotype has been used against black women for hundreds of years. And this Croton just has the name Croton slur and it's really sad it's a very commonly used one still the historical significance of this word against black women is horrific uh and it's very extensive there are lots of women who have gone down in history as this and actually also a lot of women who had this kind of name back in the day were also used as gynecology guinea pigs for white doctors to do experiments on women to develop the gynecological gynecological tools that doctors use on us today. These women had experiments performed on them without any anesthesia. They had to hold themselves up and move themselves into different positions while doctors cut them open, stuck their fingers in them. Like, I mean, it's horrific. And those are the women <laughs> who have this name attached to them, this horrific racist name that also is attached to the Croton. Those are the names I have today. This has been very hard for me to sit here and talk about because it is so sad to me, just are so inhumane and awful that they can do these awful things to people and then mock them by making names of plants, these racist caricatures of the people who they originally learned about plants from in the first place or caricatures specifically about black humans um, from all over the world. It's just really sad. So if you see any of these names, if you see companies you any, use any of these names or people using any of these names and you feel like you can say something, you don't have to like to take action and talk about stuff like this and tell companies like that stuff is really stressful. Um, but I know for me, if I ever hear people use that term, I always point it out and I say, hey, actually you might not know this, but that's actually like racist connotation. And if you could call it something else, that would be great. And every time I've done that, people are like, oh my God, I had no idea. Because most people don't know. Please share this video um, with everyone <laughs> that you know who likes plants. You feel free to post this to groups, feel free to post to anywhere. I am just one person talking about this on my channel, but there are people who write amazing articles. Like I'm gonna put these names on the screen. These people do write articles about this stuff that you can learn more from than you're gonna learn from me who is not victimized by any of these names. I'm also including all of the links that I used to gather information for this video in the description box. So that way you can do more research for yourself and learn more yourself. <sighs> I'm sorry if this video stressed you out. I'm sorry if now there's like things that you're learning that are stressful. Remember to take your meds today, drink some water, have some tea, relax, have a chai, have some coffee, do some self care if this video really stressed you out. I'm really sorry, but this stuff is really important to talk about. I don't see people talk about this stuff and it makes me really upset because there are companies that still use some of these names today that are actively racist against minority and BIPOC communities as well as indigenous communities. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for learning with me. Um, if you want me to make more of this kind of content in the future, I totally can. I tried to do this in a really respectful way, way where I don't say these names, but you still know exactly what I'm talking about. Let me know if you felt like there's something better I could have done, something more I could have done, something different. And let me know if there's more names of things. Maybe Actually, don't put it in the comment section, but maybe you could DM me on Instagram, at plantmeashley, um, and I can make more. I'd like to have a full catalog at some point of all the horrific names 
um, so that maybe I can release a PDF of names that we should not use anymore. So that's it for today's video. I'll make this one quick, short, and simple. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to join the YouTube channel memberships. It's only $5 a month and it helps me do this kind of stuff full time. It's my full time job. It's cheaper than your coffee and it helps support me be a full time content creator making content that makes a difference. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next housemate section. Again, don't forget to take care of yourself today. I love you parasocially and talk to you later. Goodbye.